I'm pulling up Facebook in the background to make sure we. Okay. I think I'm just on checking, making sure that everybody can hear us and see us. Um, let's see. Okay, yes, here we are. Okay, we're there. All right, so good evening, everyone. I hope you are doing well. I know it's late, but guess what? We are here. This is a Voice of Hair Ladies Night, and this is the time that you might be hanging out anyway. So just pretend like instead of hanging out with your friends out in real life, you're actually hanging out with friends online. So I'm super excited. Um, if you are new to the page, I'm Brandon Green. I'm the founder of Voice of Hair. And if you don't know what Voice of Hair is, we help women love what they see when they look in the mirror with products. They grow stronger, longer, and more moisturized hair. And today we are talking about how to achieve and maintain the perfect silk press. And I'm excited because I have a special guest here with us, um, Alicia Jones, and I'm going to have her introduce herself in a moment and let y'all know a little bit about her. But like, this is going to be super fun and super informative because she is an amazing hairstylist and that's why she's got her hair prepped and ready. She's going to kind of show us some tips, but um, in the meantime, if you are watching us and you're joining us live, make sure you let us know in the comments where you're tuning in from. And then if you're watching on the replay, just type replay and let us know that you are watching on the replay. And we'll come back and make sure that we answer any questions that you know we didn't get to. But in the meantime, um, I'm going to go ahead and get started with our live tonight so that you all can learn kind of some of the tips that you might need to be able to you know, achieve or even maintain the perfect silk press. So let me, without further ado, uh, let me introduce Alicia Jones. Like I said, um, she has a studio in Vancouver, Washington. It's called Beautiful Coils. So Alicia, tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. Hello, hello everyone. I'm Alicia Jones. Um, I am from Portland, Oregon, but I currently live in Vancouver, Washington. I have a hair studio out here. I've been a hairstylist for... 19 no 18 years now 18 years now yes um and I love hair I love everything about hair I promote healthy hair um I believe in healthy hair care um let's yes and I'm excited today to be on with um Brandilyn for voice of hair I love her product she knows I sweat the products it works so good it leaves your hair shiny and healthy and soft like she has came up with something really amazing. I'm so thankful to be able to speak with you all today. Yeah, so I appreciate Alicia, but um, y'all may have seen me post some of her, her work on our page. So, you know, I was just like, Alicia, I need you to tell us like, how are you achieving these amazing results? So that's what we're gonna talk about in a second. And then I want y'all to, you know, in the chat, if you have questions, make sure you let us know so that we can, you know, answer them. But to, oh, one thing I wanted to say is Alicia, like, she does a lot, lots of different things, but her specialty is natural hair, silk pressing, hair color. So like this is her lane. So she is definitely an expert and we're excited to have her. So, you know, to get started, Alicia, first, can you kind of tell us like, what is the most important thing or what are some of the most important steps to achieving like a silky and flowy silk press? Yes. So the number one thing I would say is having a very clean scalp. That is very important. Your scalp and your hair has to be cleansed well. Okay. So I definitely recommend doing at least three shampoos when you're trying to get a, you know, nice flowy because you want to get that product out because if you have too much product on your hair and your scalp, it'll weigh your hair down. You can burn your hair um, using the flat iron. So you definitely want to make sure you spend time cleansing the hair. And if it takes Four shampoos, you're going to have to do it. You know, you know, if your scalp still feel like it has buildup on it, if your hair still feels kind of heavy and weighed down from any product, um, you want to make sure you get all that out. So, yes. No, that's, then, that's, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I was going to back it up because I know we have people watching. Let me know in the comments, like, if you have, you know, if you grew up with the term silk press, because some people are like, what is a silk press? So maybe we could back it up and start there for some people, because I probably, you know, I know it because I'm in it all day. But tell us, like, mm -hmm. is it the same as a press and curl that we used to get 25 years ago? And we just has a new name. What is it? <laughs> well, that's the thing. So 
I, I feel like back in the day, um, we assume that a silk press you have to have, not assume, but back in the day we use hot, like, you know, the stove, the Marcel's, the hot comb. Um, and now there's tools if you use them correctly, you know, like smaller flat irons to get the edges. You can control your heat better versus when you're using a stove, you know, if you're not trained and skilled, you can literally burn somebody's hair. You can burn their skin. Mm -hmm. um, you can use too high of a heat. You can cause heat damage. So the beautiful thing about using controlled irons is that you can watch your heat. You can turn it down if a client's hair is too fine. If a client's hair is more porous, you can use a higher heat element, you know, uh, control or temperature. Um, so the difference is, I mean, it's not really, I mean, back, mm, they used to use more oils in the hair. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and now we don't, you know, we want more of a flowy look and not a way down look. Um, but now with proper product selection, proper heat, you can make your silk press last just as long as they used to last back in the day. Oh, that's, not, that's so good. Um, and like I said, if y'all are watching in the meantime, continue to let us know where y'all are tuning in from. Um, Alicia's actually in Vancouver, Washington. So if y'all take a trip out there, maybe you can check her out. But um, what I want to ask Alicia is, you said, you know, it starts with having a cleansed scalp, a very well cleansed scalp. Um, so I know you, it looks like, I know um, you washed your hair and you prepped for today. So like, can you walk us through like that process and like what you use to kind of get your clients ready for the, their soap press? Yes. Okay. So I have used the, <laughs> the quench and um, clean, sorry, shampoo and the black seed oil. What else it has? The silk amino acids. It leaves your hair really soft, moisturized. It cleanses and quenches your hair. So I use this as my first shampoo. I shampoo my hair three times. The first time I used it just to remove any buildup. And then I went in with the scalp shampoo. Mm -hmm. um, just like a tingly shampoo, anything that has like um, peppermint or aloe or something like that. So I use that on my scalp and then I'll follow back up with the quench and cleanse shampoo. And it just added that moisture back in my hair and left it really soft and flowy. I can't wait to show you guys. I wish you could feel how soft my hair is. It's, it's really, really soft. So I use that to cleanse my hair. And then I gave myself a uh, deep condition with the uh, quench and repair uh, conditioner. So I left this on about 15 minutes with a processing cap on. Um, I didn't have time to go under my hydration um, system, but I just used it. I just put a cap on a plastic cap mm -hmm. and let it sit for 15 minutes. Um, and then I rinsed it out, rinsed it out. And um, do you want me to keep going or am I? Was, okay. yeah, let it, yeah, I mean, I yeah. think it's helpful just to know like, the steps you as a professional and you you use this on yourself but this is also what you do with your clients too exactly exactly yes so i did um i left that on 15 minutes i rinsed it out with cool to warm water and then i use probably um because my hair can get pretty fine so i use like a just a little you know a little swivel of the, <laughs> the leave-in cream <laughs> one finger it, Yes, one finger, yes. I use a, a finger of the um, leave-in cream, emulsified it, and yes, yes, that much, exactly. <laughs> and um, rubbed it through my hair, and then I just bl air blow dry my hair. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've done so far. I haven't did anything else, but those steps, like I said, you can, it just feels soft, and it feels moisturized, and it's not weighed down. Uh, wait till I silk it out. It's gonna look really pretty. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> Well, one thing I just want to say is, um, let me ask you this, like, okay, so our shampoo, some people, they think like, well, I want a shampoo that's going to like have like lots of butters and oils to make my hair feel moisturized, but shampoo is made to cleanse your hair and your scalp. And especially for those of us who have like really oily scalps or, you know, like that seborrheic dermatitis and flakes and stuff, mm -hmm. like we need something that's kind of like a gentle clarifying shampoo so you use this you say it like two times during your wash to really I guess for the silk press you don't want too heavy of oils already in your hair no you don't so definitely I use it twice because the so it's called quench and cleanse so cleanse it gently cleanses your hair without stripping your natural oils of your hair but it gets your scalp clean and your hair clean 
And then I went back and shampooed my hair again so I can add that moisture back in because it does, it does both. It cleanses your hair and quenches your hair. So after I use it, the first shampoo and the third shampoo. And the second shampoo is a scalp shampoo. And sometimes you got to be careful when you're using like some scalp shampoos because you don't want to dry your hair out. Mm. Um, and it's for your scalp. So mm. a lot of times when I put that shampoo on, I'm literally manip manipulating the scalp, not paying too much to the hair. Gotcha. When I rinse it out, then I go back in and add the quench and cleanse shampoo so I can add that moisture back into the hair. Okay. So yeah. at least do you want to like give us a little demo of like, you know how, okay, I don't, I'm not a professional hairstylist. So when I'm, you know, at home straightening my hair, I feel like I could never get it as straight as when I get to the stylist. Is it just a matter of like the way I'm holding the hot, the, the iron, or is it a special technique that y'all have that just makes it work? Because I feel like it just never gets super straight. Right. So that's a great question. I feel like the thing is when you're at home, there's tips. So when you're at home, a lot of times we're rushing. We're not taking our time. Um, when you're at a stylist, you know, the stylist can see every piece of your hair. So every, we stand behind you. So every part we can see. When you're at home, you know, you, your arms might get tired. So the key is taking small sections and taking your time. Try not to do your hair when you got a rush. Because if you do your hair when you're rushing, it's going to look like you're rushing, right? Go ahead. I was going to say, can you like show us a little bit of like how you, um, you know, how you do that? Like yes. how you do it. So before I do that, I do want to add a drop. And I just want to show you guys, like I said, my hair is pretty fine, um, especially once I silk it out, it's just going to dry. Um, dry hair. Yes, my hair is blow dry, all that. So um, I'm using the hair elixir, but I'm literally going to use a drop of it because I want want you to see that it doesn't weigh your hair down if you don't use too much. Because <laughs> it is an oil, but it's still will help protect the hair because it has argan oil. So you're gonna get a little bit of that thermal protection that you need. So I just literally just use a drop, rub it in my hands. Mm. It smells so good. It smells clean. Like, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, Alicia, while you're doing that, I do see a comment from LaShawn. She's asking, does your hair shed more during the winter? Mine is shedding a lot. It's growing, my, my beautician said so, but it's shedding. Um, I have some thoughts on that, but I want to know if you have any expert thoughts on uh, why that might be happening for her, especially during the winter. Right. So there, there can be a few reasons. Um, there's a lot of different reasons that contribute to shedding. So one could be, oh man, it could be a lot, but I guess um, I would say our hair has three different states, right? So you have the growing state, the resting state, and then um, kind of like where your hair just sheds out mm -hmm. so understanding you know is this does it always happen in the winter um do you need to add more vitamins to your mm -hmm. you know drink more water like yes I can go on because my mind is like your hair sheds it can be just other eternal issues so you just got to get down to the root cause of why your hair is shedding what's changing has your anything in your chemical Cold history changed. Um, you could finish, Brandy, because I oh, oh you yeah. yeah. I think I think that's spot on. Like also one thing, I don't know what you know what kind of if you're taking medication all of a sudden. We know for a fact that like certain medications, like thyroid medication and blood pr pressure medication, can sometimes make people's hair come out as well as other things. So it's it's like that is it's so many different answers to why your hair might be shedding more, but you know, our hair does shed, you know, 50 to hundred strands on average a day. If you're okay. seeing like a lot more, it could also be, you know, you want to also look closely at it to see, is this breakage? Like, are, you know, is it from the follicle? And it's, and it's like, I can see that white bulb that's shedding. But if you see like smaller pieces in your comb and in your sink, then that's actually breakage. And it could be due to styling or, you know, other types of things like wrong manipulation. Right. But, um, so Alicia, I see you over here prepping your hair to like pull this kind of straightening. So you took a really small section. I don't think I've ever started with such small sections. I'm trying to usually go fast. Yes. So you definitely want to make sure you use probably about a half inch section. 
um, or even a quarter, not half inch is pretty big. So probably a quarter inch section. Um, and I'm left-handed and I'm working on my left-hand side. So it's hard for me to chase the comb with it. So I'm gonna be honest, like it takes time, it takes practice. You can feel kind of awkward. Um, some, some sections I won't chase the comb because it feels uncomfortable to me. So um, I'm gonna just show you now normally, but my little, I guess it. So I have about, I guess this is a one inch. Yeah, this is a one inch flat iron. Now, um, let me just try to see if this is ticking real quick. Let's see y'all if it's ticking. Because I like to um, hit the first two. If it's ticking, I'll take it off. Okay, bam. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna do it, but normally, Oh, sorry. Here That's we go. Okay. Normally, I would take a my small iron and I would just hit the roots. But I can't do this right now because my thing is clicking. But so basically, if I hit the roots, then I'm gonna go in. I have about a quarter inch section, and I'm gonna just put it to the roots. And then, if you can chase it, grab the comb and put it underneath the iron. Right. And I am a one pass girl. So tell us what that means. Yes. Yeah, so one pass is the iron is only going to, when I'm flattering, silking the hair out, I only do it once. So mm -hmm. if you take smaller sections and you just do it once, you, you know, um, you should get the hair straight, especially if you plan on adding body to the hair afterwards, like then you put in more heat. Mm -hmm. And there's some, you know, Everybody's different about how they feel about the passes, but um, I believe in hair care. My clients have beautiful hair. I take care of their hair and I do it with one pass. Um, again, if you feel like the hair is it's not getting straight with one pass, you probably have too much, um, too much hair. Mm. So do, you know, go down on your section. May take a smaller section, take your time. Um, yeah. And let me ask you this, like, so that's another big issue. I feel like, you know, it comes up when we talk about getting your hair silk pressed, especially like when you're natural, it's like, okay, I want to try silk press, but I don't want to have heat damage. Mm -hmm. But like, what, what's really important in your opinion to prevent heat damage? Okay. So the biggest part um, is knowing your heat settings, you know, depending on the texture of your hair. So if you have fine hair, you want to make sure you keep your iron like below 350. Mm -hmm. I always recommend when you have irons at home, stick to irons that have temperature gauge, not on and off, high, medium, and low, because you don't really know what that is, right? So making sure you have a temperature gauge on your iron. Um, so 350 for fine hair, medium to coarse hair, you could do about 400 and lower. Um, but go up to 400, four, not medium, of course, but medium here. Um, coarse hair, um, you can definitely do over like 410. Mm. However, you have to make sure the hair is properly cleansed, mm. the hair is properly dry. If you still have moisture in your hair, you can cause heat damage. Oh, You're wow. using too hot. Yeah, like, so making sure, making sure, like, take sections. The biggest thing is taking your time. Yeah. Like, to get the best silk press, spend, you know, okay, I need two hours to do my hair. Yeah, that seemed like a long time, but you wanna make sure it's properly clean. You wanna make sure your hair is fully blow dry, it's hydrated, moisturized. And that's the thing I wanna talk about too. Like at home, you see all these fancy steamers and stuff online and they're cool, right? But at home, you can do that too, to your hair. There's two ways you can, um, you know, when you take a nice hot shower, you can just pin your hair up with your conditioner on, um, clip your hair up and just let, take your shower, you know, and let that, the steam um, penetrate your hair and let the moisture go into your hair. And then when you, you know, finish your shower and it's nice and hot, then you can rinse your hair out, you mm -hmm. know, with like cooler water to seal the cuticle. Um, another way is taking a hot towel, not too hot, don't burn yourself, but get a towel and put hot water on it squeeze it out with your conditioner on, wrap it around your hair and wait till the towel cools down. 
and then rinse your hair out. Yeah, so those are ways. That, oh, go ahead. Says <laughs> most use when not steam steaming our hair because we it's, exactly yeah. exactly. And then the other part is like I get a lot of questions about the steamer I use. I don't use steam. I use mist. Mm. So it's a difference because I know you know, but you go to the salon to get a mist, a hydration, you know, misting treatment, but at home, you still can do things to add that extra moisture into your hair by doing the tips I gave you. And yes. I know someone asked about like the type of flat iron you use. Um, is, is it the brand as important? Like, do you need to have a ceramic, a titanium? Uh, I don't know what other kinds they have out there, but is there like, do you think it matters? Um, I do think it matters. I, okay, so let me say this. I have, sometimes I have clients that say, what flat iron you use? I want to use that flat iron. And I tell them like, you can bring your flat iron from your house to me and I'm still going to silk the hair out. Like if you do want to, you do want to invest in your tools. You don't want a $20 flat iron, you know? <laughs> However, I've used so many flat irons over the years and I, you still get good results. It's about product selection. It's about blow drying the hair. It's about taking your time, taking smaller parts. Um, however, ceramic and um, titanium is different. So titanium, I like to use that for more of my clients that have really, really fine hair because I feel like it gives them more of a silkier look. Um, the my ceramic irons I like to use those more for coarse hair because it, the heat gets a little hotter mm -hmm. and um it silks that hair down a lot better so mm -hmm. that's what I learned between the two working in the salon I can look at a client's hair and tell which iron I want to use based off the texture of their hair got you yes and I know that like I know that you, you I love that you're like giving us a little demo we are probably not going to be able to finish it um on camera here but you know, when you find, when you do finish it, I'm sure you'll do it tonight or tomorrow. I, I want to share the results of like what it looks like. If, if you open to it, like, I don't want to put you on the spot, yes, but if yes, you have a yes, picture, I'm open. <laughs> then yeah. I can share that. Um, but I want to, uh, yes. Uh, let me see. Okay. The other quick question I wanted to ask. So, so yes, we, I really wasn't sure how long this would take, but this is super helpful information. And I know it's late for a lot of y'all watching. So thank you for tuning in live with us. Um, one question I do have, Angel, that comes up a lot is, okay, so like we get our hair finally silk pressed. We use all the right products that you mentioned. <laughs> and mm -hmm. then we, we get a nice looking silk press. How do we maintain it so that it can last more than two days without us having to re- apply heat right okay so that's a great question so quick one is um satin rollers right i love satin rollers so after you got your body you go home you wrap your hair up take sections you know grab satin rollers so they like the old school rollers the pink rollers but they have a slip of back black satin on them so they keep your hair moisturized they don't dry your hair out and it leaves that really pretty shine in your hair um, and then another one is my favorite is pin curls. If you know how to pin curl your hair, that will keep your, um, your silk press looking really pretty. The, and also making sure that you use something satin. You know, a satin, this is a satin do-rag. I love it. For women that love do-rags, just get a satin one. And a we satin have, scarf. We oh, have a satin scarf. I'm going to send you one. Uh, I'm okay. Gonna you yeah. <laughs> but yes, I, yeah. I, you know, okay, qu two quick questions on that. Like you said, the pin curl, is it like a certain technique to pin curling your hair to kind of make it last longer? Because I feel like, you know, that's like such an easy one. A lot of us always have bobby pins or not bobby pins, but hair pins around the house. Like that's easy. And I always thought you were supposed to just like do the little doobie wrap. Is that good? I feel like sometimes it can make your hair oilier though, if you have oily it, skin. It can make your hair oily. So the wrap is like, the wrap just give you that nice sleek look. However, the wrap, um, if you have heat, you know, if you produce heat from your scalp mm -hmm. and you're wrapping that hair around it and you putting a scarf on and you sweat at night, that's how your roots can get puffy. Oh. So I don't recommend um, wrapping your hair. Um, if you have really oily scalp and you wrap that hair around and you leave it, you like to marinate and let it sit for a long time, that'll um, make your hair oily. Also, like the way I tell 
um, my clients to uh, pin curl their hair, I just do a quick little demo. I don't have a curl right here, but I'll just put one in right fast so you can see. No, that, but, that was major key right there. <laughs> so I think so many of us have been taught to like, oh, just wrap your hair at night. I know my sister, we always have that problem. And then I noticed like two or three days later, it's like, dang, my hair is feeling oily all over. Yeah, because yeah. your scalp is producing the oil and it's just marinating in it. It's juicy. So yes. Okay. So here's a quick tutorial. There's two ways to pin curl here. I don't have a really good curl right now, but um, you can take your two fingers and use it like kind of like if you was doing a roller. So this is for more clients, like if you want more volume, like big, you know, big body volume. Mm -hmm. So you take your two fingers and you wrap it around, always making sure that the tail of your hair is like at the bottom, if you can, because that'll keep, because if your tail is sticking up, like if the end of your hair is sticking up, when you take your um, pin curls out, it's still gonna be sticking up. So I always try to make sure you get it down. The key to a bobby pin, so you see that that um, the shorter, like the bent, the curved side. You can you see what yeah, I'm talking yeah, about? I can see okay, it. so that is that always needs to be towards your scalp. Oh, if you put it the other way, you'll cause bends in your hair. Oh, I never knew that. <laughs> yes. Never knew that. So make sure when you put it, you know that that bent part is toward the crimp part is towards the scalp. And then you just slide it in there and secure. Mm. And you just do that. I mean, once you do it, the first time it's going to be awkward, you know, but after a while, you will be able to just pin curl your hair and go. So Major. Um, the, the other one is just kind of like if you, if your hair is shorter and you want more like that, you know, feather type of look, mm -hmm. then you want to um, kind of like, hmm, like hold your fingers. It kind of goes to your head, if that makes sense. I just don't got a good curl, y'all, because I no, hear it up. That's good. But, oh, yeah. Okay. And then you swirl it to your head like a, you know, a flat pin curl. So you kind of take the curl, wrap it around your finger and lay it flat. If you want more of that um, wispy type of uh, layer type of look. Okay. So, yes. So I know we're gonna wrap this up soon, just because <laughs> we we are scheduled to go live on Instagram too. So if y'all wanna follow us over there and like continue the conversation, we'll do that there. But um, I did want to ask or answer one last question that I was gonna ask you anyway. But Shamika brought it up, which is, are there any products or anything that we need to do to help make it last longer to keep it, you know, keep our silk press kind of, you know, be able to wear it longer. Yes, yes. So product wise, I just recommend like when your hair gets, so at the beginning, you don't want to put product in it because it's flowing and bouncing. But when it starts feeling a little dry, you can grab your hair elixir and literally just add a drop, a drop, not too <laughs> much. Because it's oil. So you, it's going to help moisturize your hair. It's going to act and bring life back into your hair, just like that. <laughs> Rub that in. And then always pay attention to your ends because your ends are old. They've been on your hair the longest. And usually that's the part that like gets the most, gets dry first. So I would make sure, you know, you rub it on the ends, go in and put some on your scalp because it feel good too, you know? And then um, that, that will bring life back into your hair. But you want to stay away from anything that has water in it. Okay. You don't want any products that's too heavy. Um, but that's pretty much it, you know, you, you, and you definitely want to make sure though, this is the, this is a key that I do want to say here. Okay. The way to prevent heat damage. Cause a, you, a lot of times you hear clients go into the salon, they get a silk press and then, you know, they come or they wash, they're touching it up. They're keeping it up at home. They're putting heat in it. Right. Yeah. Do not put heat in your hair mm. after you get a salon, like roll it up. Yes pin curl it up like the, that's going to be the best way to prevent heat damage mm. is not trying to keep it up like add extra heat to your hair yeah absolutely have to like absolutely i recommend that your iron is on like 300 not higher oh, than wow. that okay yes because you just, the hair should already be straight you just add in like some curl to it or some body yeah. Um, and making sure 
you grab your hair elixir because that's going to act the argan oil in it is going to act like a thermal it is a thermal protectant mm -hmm. a little drop rub it through your hair and then curl your hair 300 like that's, that's i tell it. my clients that and they hear <laughs> they keep their hair up so how long does a silk press last for your clients everybody's different so most two weeks some not most some people just want to come back they hair still be looking good so <laughs> but um i mean there's clients that go two weeks there's clients that go three weeks everybody's different but i recommend when a client comes for the first time if you haven't had a silk press in a long time um i just i'm always honest with them like you may get a week you know because you just don't know how your hair what your activity level if your hair is going to try to revert back because it hasn't been straightened. Um, so I always like to be honest and upfront with them. Uh, I say a week, but and then they're happy if they get two or three. So I, yeah, or average two weeks. Average. Okay. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Well, mm -hmm. uh, I, there's one last question I'll answer and then we can, um, we'll hop on and go to Instagram for anybody else that wants to continue the conversation with us. But Teresa asked, is 420 too high for coarse hair? And I feel like you said 410 is probably like the highest you want to go. Yeah, so my thing is, um, when you're at home doing your own hair, I always recommend do heat less, you know, go down because, you know, a stylus is fast. So if I use 420 on coarse hair, in the salon is because I'm quick. I'm not leaving that that iron on too long. I'm not keeping going over and over those pieces. So if you're doing your hair at home, Teresa, I recommend 410 um, and just take smaller sections. That's just my opinion. Well, Alicia, I so appreciate you. I feel like if anybody else thinks this is helpful, let us know in the comments. I feel like I learned a lot and I really thought I knew a lot about soap presses because I've never had a relax and I've only had soap presses my whole life. But um, mm -hmm. you definitely gave us some good tips. And, you know, if anybody is interested in trying the collection, I will have it pinned in the comments as well as in the caption and you can check it out. Check it out. But um, Alicia, this was super helpful. I can't wait to see your finished look. I can already tell that the hair is about to be, you know, moving and bouncing. But uh, if y'all have other questions, definitely, if you watch later on the replay, just type replay and uh, let us know that you watched a little later and we'll come back and try to answer it. But thank you, Alicia, so much for your time. And like I said, we're going to hop on over to Instagram um, if anyone else wants to come join us there. So Thank y'all so much. Have a wonderful night. And thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Hopefully this was a fun ladies night for you because it was fun for me. Yes, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> and make sure to follow Alicia. Her page is Beautiful Coils Hair Studio on Facebook and then on Instagram is Beautiful Coils. Okay, bye-bye. Yes. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>